Okay, so we're here in Dudley, and uh, I'm Lorna Prescott, this is Donna Roberts and John Weston, and we've invited John Popham and David Wilcox to um, just share some of the stories of our society in Dudley Borough, and for them to perhaps tell us about things that we might be able to think into that we've perhaps forgotten are out there or didn't know were out there. Um, and we thought we'd um, just explain some of the exciting things that um, we're up to, but also some of the frustrations that we're having in terms of trying to embed an empowering way of, of kind of taking things forward in Dudley. So, should we start with the um, work that we're doing with Urban Forum? Well, yes, Urban Forum and WCBS are uh, working together in um, Dudley to find out what community and voluntary organisations um, know about what community rights are, as in the Localism Bill, and uh, to, well, to test their knowledge give information but also to um, find out what their appetite is for taking up um, community rights and going through some um, a process of um, looking at how that maybe could be realised with some of the public sector partners within the borough. I think is that it in a nutshell. And you've been to one of the focus groups. I have and what's quite exciting for me is that the fact that now um, I've worked with the Kemp's for a long, long time and I know that they need examples and as much input on what really people need. So without that input, they can't provide what they need. So it's been really, really good for them to be listening and saying, well, what we need is skills and we're not sure what this localism bill means, there's some confusion. Um, and as an officer for a local authority, I can relate to that because what the communities need are very much what we as staff need, and if we can mar something together, and it's really reassuring to know that they're not looking really to, to take over buildings and take over the world. They really want to do what's sensible and work in partnership mm. with us, and it's having those conversations and, and feeling like we've got some direction and some focus, and it's a real opportunity to lay our cards on the table from both perspectives and sort of say, this is what we're about, this is what we want, this is how we can achieve that together. So I like it. <laughs> it's quite exciting. Mm. I think it is quite interesting how, as Donna said, many of the groups are saying that they don't want to take on a building or have so much responsibility and take on contracts and services and things like that, but they want to be able to have more of a relationship, more of a, a level playing field and, yeah. and make sure that their input into maybe designing a service or changing a service but actually means something, that they're being listened to, they're seen as an equal um, and all, all those types of things and I suppose that's nothing really new to community development practices throughout the borough and the empowering approach to engagement that uh, WCBS has been working on for many years now so but I suppose it's it's um, I suppose it's the first time that we've been able to do some kind of research like this to to really kind of bring that to the forefront really. So it seems like the localism bill maybe is a bit too far ad advanced maybe, but for some organisations it, it might it, it might fit. Though I think the public sector organisations and especially the council are really struggling to know what it actually means to them and how they can facilitate change and you know what does it mean to their service or their directorate especially as it's done at the same time as many budget cuts. Yeah. Many people don't even know what their organisation is going to look like or whether they're going to have a job in, in mm. six months' time, so it's, it's very difficult. But it is an also an opportunity, isn't it, to work in different ways and take stock and look at what you need to be able to achieve things. Um, so I think that's the way that you've got to see it, but it is a difficult time. Mm. I think what I'm quite excited about in terms of the next phase of that work is um, the sort of community kitchen type workshops that we're going to have um, that take that people power change approach. So whereas when we bring people together in networks into the people from all different kinds of jobs and organisations but around how they're working with communities and engaging them and they will often see the problems they face as problems that reside with the communities mm -hmm. And I think what we'll be able to do through our work in the next phase in November is actually demonstrate to both frontline practitioners and senior decision makers, look, there are people out there who have 
various different kinds of assets that have passion and enthusiasm to do different kinds of things. Um, some of it they can do on their own and they are doing yeah. anyway, and some of it can be more effective and thrive if public agencies work a bit differently. So I think that would be nice when we come together with decision makers yes. to share some of that. That's right, and I suppose it's, it's trying to join up the two sides, isn't it? In that there are opportunities and um, the, the public sector, the local authority may see opportunities. They may not be the opportunities that the people want. They may want different opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to kind of negotiate what that, what that actually means. So both sides can, can get um, something that's effective for what they want to try and achieve. And I think, um, again, related to budget cuts, I suppose, is that many organisations are starting to look now at different ways to do things um, and how, how communities can get involved in that maybe and what their role may be. But I suppose it's the, real, the realism on what communities actually want to contribute towards that. Um, and they yeah, may not want to take on the management mm -hmm. of, a, of a centre or whatever. So it's, yeah, it's ba balancing those opportunities and those um, aspirations. And Donna and I are doing some desk research at the moment with um, a graduate volunteer. And one of the th he's off today at the West Midlands Co-Production Network, finding out about co-production, because we've been talking about how can we sort of perhaps have a bit of a shift in the way that we work in Dudley, but whilst we set high aspirations, enable a step-by-step -step process so that there isn't sudden change that's unnerving and, and difficult for people to manage but that we can have a sort of phased process of change, but be clear about where we want to get towards and sort of equality of how people's skills and um, expertise is seen, whether they are a service user or a service provider. So, mm. I think that's quite exciting, isn't it? Because that's work has gone on over about two or three years, and I don't think we've had proper time to reflect yeah. on what doing these pieces of work mean. Mm. So, for example, I'm looking at the voice framework. Yes. Um, and these workshops have taken place over a, a couple of years, haven't they? And it's seeing that journey, it's seeing people's confidence build, and it's also seeing what suddenly deflates them. And then if we've got these actions and proper, you know, a proper journey to follow, we can then use that yeah. to, to try and prevent that happening in future. You know, with these groups that are organised and they're coming together and they're doing great things, what is it that builds them up? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time it's the fact that they don't even know how, how good they are to start with, mm -hmm. so it's that building them, but then all of a sudden you can see like certain action will come across and they are just deflated yes. and then they have to build themselves again, so we've got to learn from that I think. Yes. That's quite yeah. exciting to have that time to look at that That's whole right. picture. Yes. I think commun community groups have, um, I don't know if the donkey's ears, um, kind of emerged or built themselves up to meet a need in their communities mm. because there's, there's a void there anyway mm. um, and I think that the fact that services are being cut and that services will withdraw because they, they can't deliver them anymore they've made a budget decision on them they can't fund that particular aspect I think if communities are able and willing to move move in and take that up they're taking an opportunity because they're looking at the needs of their of, of their communities and I think that's the right thing for them to do if they're able to do it because I don't think we really have much choice because I don't think those those communities are in a, a position unless there's particular legal issues to do with equality or impact on people that they can actually um, kind of demand that service be given back, you know, back again. So it's kind of, well, what do the community do to stand back and think, well, I can't, I'm not going to do anything about it because it should have been them and I'm not going to do anything anyway. But if there are people that can come forward and do it then, um, I suppose it's unfortunate that people are going to say, well, it lets David Cameron off the hook then, <laughs> doesn't it? But um, well, what's the option? And in some areas, communities won't come forward and do anything because they aren't able or willing to do it. and. Yeah, that's a shame, but I think you have the assets that you've got within the community and hopefully they'll use them if, if they can. And hopefully the public sector will be there if they can as well to provide some support and to enable them to do that. Um, whether it be through you know, grant funding or networking or you know, whatever it may be. Um, 
think that we, we, we had lots of debates in the early stages about well, what are we doing about this big society then, when we were on the verge of discovering our society. And we knew what the thoughts, and also our thoughts at the time as well, we were, looking, we were quite sceptical and thinking, well, you know, you know, what are they trying to achieve here? Is it um, cheap labour or whatever? But I think that we came to the conclusion that, well, no matter what the scepticism is about big society as a concept, we wanted to be able to make it positive for us in Dudley and take the good parts of what we knew we could try and achieve something with um, and, and have a positive response so that in Dudley as much as possible that we could do, um, we could make sure that we, we, we try to have some ethics around what that concept meant. And so therefore when policies start being delivered locally, we can try and have some impact on what, how those are being delivered and then the impact upon the communities. So I think that's kind of what I think about, and it's what we've been talking about as well, isn't it? Yeah, and so, I mean, two of the things that stand out from, for me from our early discussions are the fact that um, we acknowledged that there's local voluntary action happening all the time in Dudley. We've got hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, and we shouldn't be, as other organisations, claiming the credit for that. That happens, it's been mm -hmm. happening, it will carry on happening. Um, but I can remember a discussion last July when we realised that work we've been doing to date around our community strategy and stronger community thread of work um, related a lot to the, the kind of five threads in the Big Society document that the coalition put out. But what was missing in terms of what we had in our work and wasn't in there was equalities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think for us there's been a sort of a thread through of what we're trying to do that's around anti-discrimination, recognising that it exists tackling prejudice um, and I think there are still issues that we need to tackle around how a policy impact assessment is done or not done.